AEW got a big bump in the overnight ratings on Wednesday. They did their best numbers since the start of the pandemic. Shows back in March, 901,000 total overnight viewers, up 16% from the week before. And no, the highest rated segment of the show was not the John Moxley Darby Allen main event for the AEW Championship. In fact, that did the lowest quarter of the show. The high mark was the opening 12-man tag with the Elite and FTR against the Dark Order. So the Dark Order, you could say, drew the biggest number of the night. See, Brody Lee is vindicated. And people said Brody Lee wasn't a draw. <laughs> I'm sure it had nothing to do with the 11 other people in the match or the people on the other side of the ring. Brody Lee has been vindicated. And 918,000 viewers for the debate between Chris Jericho and... And Orange Cassidy, 918,000 for a debate. That's pretty damn good. The news was also good for NXT. Up over 6% from the 707 the week before to 753,000 viewers. Both shows combined for more than 1.6 million viewers. That's the same number of viewers that Monday Night Raw did two weeks ago. So they're there. They're not even like nipping at the heels anymore. They're there. Tony Khan tweeted, thank you everyone who watched Dynamite last night. Thank you. Thanks to you. We were top five in the 18 to 49 demo again, plus our biggest overall audience since pre-pandemic with Fulham winning the playoffs and back in the Premier League. That plus this Dynamite rating, it is the best week I ever had. So Tony Khan was flying. Tony Khan was on cloud nine having the best week of his life. And then came the news later in the week, just to show you it wasn't all rainbows and rose petals for AEW this week. There was a major, major shakeup at Warner Media on Friday. Talk about a Friday news dump. Save all the bad, save all this, uh, kind of bad news. I mean, they won't position it as bad news, but, uh, definitely spooked a lot of people. And they saved the announcement for Friday. The parent company of TNT is Warner Media. TNT, of course, is the network that airs AEW. And I wouldn't say it's bad news yet, but it is a little unsettling. Two top executives are out, including Kevin Riley. That is the name that matters because were it not for Kevin Riley giving AEW a shot, there would very likely be no AEW right now. I don't mean AEW on TV, I mean AEW, period. Were it not for the support of Kevin Riley. And it's very likely they would not have been signed to a $45 million contract through 2023 with an option for 2024. The problem is contracts can be broken, as is the case with Riley, who has been with the company since 2014. He came in as the head of TNT and TBS, and later on he was promoted to the head of content for Warner Media, he just signed a four-year deal with the company in May of last year. And now, he's unemployed. So, we've heard this with WWE, right? People signing five-year contracts. Look at Anderson and Gallows last year. They signed a five-year contract. Triple H talked them into it. Wasn't even a year later. They were thrown out on their asses. Contracts were meant to be broken. And it's not usually the employees or the talent, as it were, that have the power in those situations. So, so much for that four-year deal that Kevin Riley signed. And it raises concerns for AEW. You know, Casey Bloys, who used to be the president of HBO programming, will now oversee content for HBO Max, as well as TNT, TBS, and True TV Networks. And... And Sarnoff. And Sarnoff is the chief executive of Warner who oversees all of their cable networks. And Casey Bloys is going to report directly to her. So he will not have absolute power over those networks. She would have final say over any big decisions. And she's been there for a while. So it's not like she's a newbie. I mean, she's been there. I, she's probably been there at least a year, maybe more. Kevin Riley was the one who gave AEW a chance. He was a fan of what they were doing. He was an ally of Tony Khan's. But that does not mean that just because he is gone, the future is bleak for AEW. Nobody knows. That's, that's the answer. And that's, I think, what scares some people, is that we don't have all the answers. Nobody really knows. This just happened. This happened, I mean, this was announced less than 48 hours ago from where I am recording this right now. 
This is still fresh in everybody's minds. This took a lot of people by surprise. It's too early to know where this may lead. But I think everybody who's been around long enough to remember the story of WCW hears about major executive changes at TNT. <laughs> you know, it's like, and they rightfully get a little worried because you think back to what happened 20 years ago. Of course, WCW was also a fucking mess and lost $60 million the year before they uh, got taken off TV. So there is that. AEW is consistently one of TNT's best shows. They chart in the top five of the demo most weeks. They're bordering on a million viewers a week. You know, more if you count DVR numbers. AEW is original weekly programming for TNT at a time when there is not a lot of that due to the pandemic. You know, they got the NBA back. But a lot of other things have been on hold. Wrestling never stopped. WWE continued. AEW continued. So there is value in that. Their pay-per-views apparently have performed very well on, on BR Live, which is a, another Warner property. That's their streaming property. And keep this in mind, you know, this HBO Max launch has been said, from everything I've read about it, has said to be disappointing. Whatever the expectations were for HBO Max, I guess they have not really fully been met. It's been a little disappointing. That probably is why Riley and some of these other people got the axe this week and had more to do with that than anything else. If that's the case, if HBO Max needs a boost... Well, why not host AEW events on HBO Max instead of BR Live? Or have other, maybe not the pay-per-views, but have other special shows a few times a year, AEW, on HBO Max. They could potentially tap into AEW to help out HBO Max, maybe drive a few new subscribers. So I think everybody needs to just calm down, take a breath. It's a concern. Right, that, that that one ally that you had in your corner is no longer there. But it's way too early to know if this is going to be another Jamie Kellner situation. Kellner being the one who ultimately put the nail in WCW's coffin. But WCW put a lot of nails in its own coffin long before Jamie Kellner did. And due to the NBA schedule, there will be some dynamite preemptions, which is actually n terrible because... Here they are, and their, their, their numbers are starting to go back up to pre-pandemic numbers. They're building a lot of momentum, putting on a lot of good TV. And when your schedule gets disrupted, that's not usually a good thing, right? Because people are creatures of habit. No matter how many times you tell them on Twitter or on TV, you flash a banner on the screen with flashing Christmas lights on it, where you're going to be preempted. Please tune into this network on this date. We're not going to be on next week. Invariably. The following Wednesday, people are going to click on the TNT and be like, where's AEW? It's just the way it is. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And just to give you a, a much smaller example, there have been times over the years, it hasn't happened recently, but there have been times over the years where, you know, this podcast, which has dropped, you know, on most Sundays going back to 2007, there have been the occasional sound offs that have dropped on a Saturday or on another day if I was going to be away or on vacation or something and I tell people at least a week, if not multiple weeks in advance, the sound off on this date is not going to drop on Sunday. It's going to drop a day earlier. It's going to drop midweek. And I can't tell you, even after all of that promotion, all the tweets, <laughs> the tweets and the emails that come in on, on sound off Sunday, where's the podcast? I guess he's not podcasting this week. <laughs> and I got to tell them all over again. People are creatures of habit. No matter how many times you tell them, they are creatures of habit. So at a time when they're building a lot of momentum to be shifted away from their normal time slot two weeks in a row uh, is not going to be a good thing. Wednesday, August 19th. That episode of Dynamite will not air on Wednesday, August 19th. Instead, it will air on Saturday, August 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Wednesday, August 26th. Dynamite will not air. It will instead air the next night, August 27th. At 8 p.m. Eastern. So this is even worse, right? Because like on the Saturday show, it's not even the, it's not even the normal time slot. So, you know, again, that's that's problematic. So those two weeks, they're going to be uh, out of their usual slot. Then things go back to normal, but then they get preempted again on September 16th. And that episode will air the next night at 8 p.m. Eastern. What that means is that I'm going to be going live for my NXT review for those three weeks instead. 
The NXT review will shift away from the Sunday show here for those weeks. I will be live on YouTube after NXT ends, talking about that show on YouTube instead. And the August 22nd stream, that's Saturday, August 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern time for Dynamite is interesting because that is the night of NXT TakeOver 30. That is SummerSlam weekend. And so what that means is I will be going live after TakeOver for what will now be a hybrid stream, talking NXT TakeOver and that night's AEW Dynamite. So it's going to be a hybrid stream. There is going to be a little bit of overlap. I think the second hour of Dynamite is going to overlap with the first hour of, of TakeOver, but I'll figure something out. And we'll be live. We'll be live that night and the next night after SummerSlam. 